it says that we are streaming live. Let me make sure I turn all of this down. Give me just a second. Hey, you guys, it says that we are on live. Hey, y'all, I'm excited to be with you guys on tonight. Let me see who's on. Let me check my, um, let me just make sure. Let me double check everything is good on my end. And then we're going to get this thing started. I will not be before you long. I promise you, I will not be before you long. I'm going to drop this word off and I am going to keep on going about my day. How have y'all been? Happy Wednesday. Happy August. Happy August to you guys. Let's see. Word off. Yep. It is on and popping. Okay. I think we are good to go. So welcome, you guys. Hey, let's see who's on here with me. Let me see if I can see you guys, um, see who's on here. Uh, let me look. Notifications and things <clears throat> are going off. I'm excited about you guys being here. Let's see. Hey, you guys, if you're in the comments, let me know where you are joining from. If you have a business, I would love for you to tag your business page under this broadcast. Let me know um, what your business is and let's connect. Let's support one another. Again, welcome. For those of you who may not know me, I am Sharisa T. I am the visionary of HR Ministries and I teach, I coach LLC. And I am coming tonight to drop a little wisdom, drop some nuggets on entrepreneurship. I'm going to tell you guys my story in just a few moments, but let me do one more thing and then we're going to get this party started. Hey, if you hear me, if you see me, make sure that you are commenting that um, helps me a lot to let me know that someone is here. And also too, listen, you can send stars as well check those send those stars send those hearts let me know that you are here so i'm excited to um be before you i have a, a word that i want to share with you guys on tonight about entrepreneurship do we have any entrepreneurs here or anyone who is interested in being an entrepreneur if you are here I would love for you to go ahead and put that in the chat so that I can see um and then I want to connect with you let's connect listen I've been um in full-time entrepreneur um my journey since 2021, May of 2021. And let me tell you, there are some highs, some lows, some good, some bad, and some ugly. And we're going to talk about it. Like we are going to talk about this thing. So I'm excited to be able to share with you um, just a few tips for those who are entrepreneurs or those who are thinking about being an entrepreneur. So if you are here, if you're in the chat, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Let me know because we're going to get this thing started and um, I'm excited about it. So let's get started. Entrepreneurship, this is the last installment of class in, is in session. Man, we have had an amazing, an amazing time with some amazing women um, this past summer. In June, we had um, Dr. Dandy Wells come and she talked about mental health. Um, last month, we had um, Coach Kimmy J come on here and she was talking about divorce dating Christian. And so tonight, I get a chance to come on here to drop some nuggets, just a few nuggets um, of about entrepreneurship, about the journey. So I've been on this journey since May 2021. And let me tell you, it has been a journey. Um, this is something that I pray for. 
I remember um, back in maybe 2015, 2014, somewhere along in there, having a conversation with a friend saying, you know what, I can see myself making my own schedule. I can see myself being my own boss. I can see myself doing this. I can see myself doing that. I was that person. And, you know, to God be the glory. He has allowed me to walk in that thing. But let me tell you, that's my story. And it was a journey. Let me tell you, it didn't happen overnight. Um, Some of you guys may look up and say, oh, hey, I didn't know she was doing this. Um, And it seems like it happened all of a sudden, but it was years Listen, that vision, <clears throat> that dream was back in 2015 and I start walking in in 2021. So you're talking about years, six years um, of praying and fasting and asking God to put me in the right place and to position me for it, um, to talking about it, to learning everything that I could, as much as I could learn about starting a business and doing certain things because I really wasn't savvy. I had no clue what I was doing. And um, if I can be very transparent, when I wanted to come into entrepreneurship, it had nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Um, Well, eh, let me, I I may have to rephrase that. Um, And I guess I will need to start off by saying, so my business, what I do is I coach um, and I teach. I still work with children. For many of you know, my background is education. Um, and so I've been an educator for all these years. And then I took a leap of faith, May, 2021 and said, Hey, I'm not renewing my contract. I walked away from the school system and started doing my own thing. Um, I'm going to talk about how I got there. And then I'm going to tell you guys about, um, a little bit about um, the processes and the changes that I had to go through in order to actually get to where I am. So I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm ready to share this um, message with you guys. So what I would love for you to do, if you are watching, I would love for you to share this out, tag, um, share it out, do some things, um, get some people on here who you may know who want to start a business or who wants to go into entrepreneurship. Maybe they're doing it part-time. They're thinking about going into it full-time. Um, I think whether you're doing it part-time or full-time, I think these tips are going to be good for you. Um, whether you're thinking about it well-seasoned, um, I think these are still going to be good tips for you. And I want to invite you to a networking event at the end of this um, broadcast. Um, and I hope that you guys can be there, especially those who are in Birmingham, Alabama. So let's go. Y'all ready for this word? I'm going to drop it off and I'm going to keep moving. So if you are ready for this word, I'm looking down at my phone. Um, if you're ready for this word, let me know. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Welcome again. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Again, I'm excited to share these tips and tools with you as I talk to you about entrepreneurship. Again, if you have a business ministry, you're doing anything, drop the links in the comments. We would love to support, connect, and um, and and partner with you guys. So make sure that you tag your business pages, put your business link. Let's blow this chat up uh, with your businesses, and not only that, let's support one another. I believe that you know supporting um, each other and putting our information out there is the biggest tool, one of the biggest things we can do with marketing. So if you have a business page, a business, if you're on Facebook, tag your pages, tag yourself, tag those things because I want to connect with you. Again, for those of you who are watching, maybe you're watching me live or the replay, I am Sharissa T and I am excited that you decide to click on this live for this class in session. Yes, our last class in session for the summer. They have been amazing. If you're on our YouTube page, you can go back and look at them. Um, You can go back and check them out. I mean, Ooh, so many nuggets, so many gems, so many good, just good meat <clears throat> for this season that we're in. So I implore you to go back. But hey, if you are a entrepreneur and you have a business, shout out your business page. If you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, um, shot, put your pages below. Um, listen, let's connect. I'm excited. I love 
um, being able to connect with other like-minded individuals who are um, doing some of the same things that I'm doing. So I'm excited about what God is going to share. So let's back up. So how did I get here? Um, back in 2014, God started me on a journey, um, which I now understand that that journey was to really solidify my identity, um, to get to know who I am, to get to know what God has called me to do. Because at that particular time, I was in the classroom in my career teaching. I thought that's what I was called to do. I didn't think I was called to do anything else but teach children. Okay. Um, running a business, I didn't, I've never seen that done. So I didn't think I was called to that. Um, I really didn't think, hey, y'all, I see y'all coming on. I really didn't think I was called to, you know, leadership or to be a speaker and an author and all those things. That wasn't my identity. I didn't know that. But God allowed me to go through this phase for a very long time, uh, for about six or seven years of understanding my identity. And so that was the first thing I had to do into um, start my entrepreneurship journey. I really need to know who I was, what God was calling me, because I really feel like a lot of us sometimes we think about uh, what we do being our purpose is, um, you know, so I'm a teacher, that's my purpose, but it's really a lot bigger than that. That's what God has put inside of us, but the gift is a lot bigger than that. And that's what God showed me. And so, um, about six years, I was on this journey of discovering who I was and through a ministry, through this actual ministry, actually HR Ministries, which was formerly known as Hello Ruth. Um, I don't want to get into the backstory of that, how we became HR Ministries, but um, our HR stands for Hello Ruth. Hello, Kim. I see you. Thank you so much for joining. So yeah, so it started through this journey of this ministry, like this ministry was my launching pad into full-time entrepreneurship. Had I not been in this position, I don't think I would be the entrepreneur that I am today um, or would have ever thought about doing things like this. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe God had that in plan on down the road, but I do believe that this ministry was my launching pad for my next. And so um, I, I ended up um, switching schools in 2019. So at my previous school, I was there for 14 years. And then I switched schools in 2019, which took a very huge step for me because I was comfortable. I knew everybody. I had made relationships where I was. I wasn't thinking about moving. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but God had another plan. Somebody need to put that in the chat. He has another plan. He has a plan for me and his plan I didn't understand it right then what he was doing, but I get it now. So he took me from a my a job that a place where I was for 14 years to put me in a very unfamiliar, unknown place. Didn't know the people, didn't I only knew about one, two people at that particular time at this new school. And this was just a very um unfamiliar like unknown place and so he put me in this unknown place for two years and when I first got there the first year God started revealing things to me it was in 2020 I'll never forget he started showing me things and revealing things to me about my next move and my next step um, but I didn't know how it was going to play out. Honestly, my entrepreneurship journey started as my mind wanting to be a coach, which I am. I am a book and business coach, but that's all I thought I was going to do. Okay. That was it. Let's let me, let, let me make that real clear. That's all that I thought I was going to do. In my mind, I envisioned that I was going to be a coach, this coach, this writer, um, speaking and doing all these things. Nothing to do with education, <laughs> no parts. I wanted no parts in my entrepreneurship journey. But let me tell y'all about God. God's plans supersedes everything. So I'm at this new school. Um, let me go back. So at my previous school, I did tutor um, every now and then. I had maybe like one or two scholars that I would tutor every now and then. But I didn't think anything of it. 
Um, you know, I was tutoring here and there, made my own little schedule after work, um, but I wasn't thinking anything of it. And then um, once I moved into this, when the pandemic hit, actually, tutoring picked up because what happened was there was a shift in teaching. Hey, hey, Tisha, there was a shift in education. And, sh and so the t we had to go from being in a building to a virtual setting. And with COVID, a lot of people were afraid to go in the building. So what they did was they, they had um, school at home. A lot of people went to homeschooling. A lot of people thought about, you know, um, other resources and ways to help their child. So my tutoring portion of my life skyrocketed through COVID. Again, not my plan because hear me and I say it again, I had didn't want any parts with education when I thought about entrepreneurship. I didn't. I did not. I thought I was going to be this coach making all these digital products, which I do have, um, ebooks and all those things I have because that was my mindset. But God was like, uh, no. And so my tutoring business just start picking up. And I went from having like three clients to about 10. And then after that, it just, it, they kept coming. It kept coming. It just kept going. And so I eventually met this young lady who um, wanted me to be her child's full-time teacher. But here's the thing. When I first met her, she wanted me to be her child's teacher. And I was like, girl, I don't know about that. I was like, um, I don't know. Let me pray. And so probably what, maybe six months or a year later, maybe, I think, or that next um, school round, the question came up again. She asked me again in January. I can talk about it now because, yeah. So she asked me again in January of 2021. And at that time, God had been revealing to me what he was calling me to do. And so I was, I, and, and I was more apt to shifting my mindset from coming this book and business coach, which is a part of my business, but actually a um, tutor. And so, <clears throat> or a private teacher. And so um, I, I talked with my mentor. Let me tell y'all, first nugget of the day, find your mentor that find you a mentor should just speak to your soul. <laughs> listen, I had a mentor who I said, listen, sis, this is, this opportunity has um, been afforded to me and I need some wisdom. And she was like, well, you already know God had already been talking to you about blah, 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 blah. And so is this opportunity here, just take it, you know, let's sit down, let's write up the contract and do everything and let's do it. And so she and I sat down, I actually presented something to her. She was like, oh yeah, this is flawless. Send it over, sent it over to the client. She immediately signed. Me and my fear, and this is in, this was in February of 2021. Like the school year was still in. I didn't tell anybody but my mentor <laughs> and maybe a couple of other people, some of my close, my close circle. I didn't tell a lot of people. That's another nugget. I'm dropping gems. I hope you're catching them. Okay. I didn't tell a lot of people. And so, um, I, I I had to wrestle with that thing because I'm like, okay, God, I'm used to this paycheck cling, cling, clinging in my bank account every two weeks. I love it when it drops, you know? Um, just being honest, because it helps keep the keep the lights and the gas and the bills on, you know? Um, and to going to um having you know, being paid with this um, different system with invoicing and all of this stuff, like the whole dynamics was was shifting for me. So I was in this season of excitement, but I was also nervous. I was scared out of my mind because I was doing something I've never done before. Entrepreneurship is risky. <laughs> 
It is risky and you have to be able to take risk. I believe that if you want to be an entrepreneur full-time or part-time, you got to be able to take risk. You got to be able to say, you know, hey, I'm going to do something. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. And you can always, and that's kind of how I looked at it. I said, I'm going to take this leap of faith. I'm going to uh, become this child's full-time teacher for the next school year. I'm not going to renew my contract. I'm going to take this leap of faith. And I was telling a good friend, he and I was leading a small group at the time. And I told him, I said, I said, I'm going to take this leap of faith. If it works out for this year or works out good, if it don't, I can always fall back on my certification. This is, this is in 2021. And so when the end of the school year came, I remember having to kind of like tell um, the people who I have developed relationship with for the last two years that I wasn't coming back. Now, the whole process of that is, it, it, I don't want to go into all of that, but that was just like a very weird time for me. I really want to focus on my leap of faith in entrepreneurship because what had to happen, I'm going to share some things with you that um, will help you if you're thinking about doing this, whether it's part-time or full-time. Because let me tell you, working your business part-time is very, very is good as well. It can be done. I see a lot of people who are working nine to fives, working in their careers, but they're still having their part-time, their, their business on the side. They are working late nights or working nights and weekends, or they're working two days or three days on their businesses, but working their main jobs Monday through Friday, whatever floats for you. I'm not telling you full-time entrepreneurship is for you. I don't know where you are. You may not be in that place right now, but if you're thinking about, you know, being an entrepreneur or you're thinking about, um, I see y'all joining. Hey, y'all, if you're thinking about um, becoming an entrepreneur, especially if you want to do this full time, there are some things I want to share with you that you're going to have to shift in, in order to um, really just take that leap. But a lot of things, uh, the main thing I want to share with you is that it's risky. Um, you're taking a leap of faith. It's the unknown. You don't know. And here's what I understand. My 14 years at my previous school, me leaving my 14 years of that school was a yes to God saying, okay, I can trust her. I know she was comfortable where she was. She liked being at that place, that familiarity, those people that she's built relationships with for 14 years is a long time, okay, to just abruptly change in a matter of seconds. Like, and that, and that was hard. And that could be a hard process for you to leave one place and go into another. But there was a lot of shifts that had to happen. And I want to share those things with you. Let me pull up my notes because I want to make sure I give you everything that God has given me to give to you tonight. So let me pull this up. Um, But yeah, like it was just, there were a lot of things that had to happen in order for me to um, make this change into full-time entrepreneurship. So I'm going to give you guys some tips. I want to give you guys, um, um, let me see, I think I have six or seven things that I want to share with you um, as it relates to um, entrepreneurship. So if you are ready for this, I hope that you are taking your notes. I hope that you are... um, excited about what God is getting ready to share with you, wherever you may find yourself on the journey. Hey, I see some people here on Zoom. I didn't even know that. Um, Hey, <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining. I see y'all on Zoom. I see y'all on Facebook. Y'all are in this room. Listen, I believe that these six things are going to be very um, vital for you on your journey, no matter, again, where you find yourself, whether you are work- thinking about doing this part-time, thinking about about doing this for um, the moment. I don't know, but let me just share these things um, with you and I can can just kind of... And if you have questions, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and I will answer them um, as soon as I can. Let me make sure that, uh, let's see, the chat is available for my guests on um, Zoom. But yeah, like the first thing I want to show you guys or tell you guys is that if you... um, 
you're going to have to in this season or in this time of transition or becoming or whatever God is doing in your life as it comes to an entrepreneurship journey, you're going to have to trust God, <laughs> period. Like you got to trust him and it's not going to make sense and it's not going to look pretty. And it's, you're going to be wondering, second guessing. You're going to be like, Jesus, what is happening? But listen to me, trusting God is going to be one of the main things that I can tell you in this season as you are shifting from one place to another. Proverbs 3 um, five through six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. If God has put you in a place or put this desire in your heart, um, to be an entrepreneur or to go into philanthropy or whatever God has called you to do, to run a nonprofit, to start a ministry, to, um, start a, a, a web, uh, I don't know, a coaching business or to, um, start a tutoring business or whatever it is, you're going to have to trust him. Okay. It's going to start with you trusting the word and trusting what he gave you. You can't, and, and here's the thing, trusting God is not going around asking other people what they think. <laughs> You're going to have to believe what God say. You're going to have to trust what he said. Um, let me be honest. I've had many people come to me asking me about going back into, um, in, into uh, the classroom. And it sounds great. It sounds very, very great, but that ain't what God told me. And every time I stick my pinky toe out there to do it, <laughs> he will shut it down, period. He's like, no, I didn't tell you to do that. Listen, trust in God, meaning that means you got to trust his will, his word and his way. You're not going to know everything. You're not going to have all the details, but you got to trust what he said to you. So if you're thinking about full-time entrepreneurship, starting a business, um, you're going to have to trust him. Another thing I want to um, tell you guys too is, especially for kingdom business owners, people who are doing things for the kingdom, you got to make sure he's your foundation. God is the foundation. He is, you have to build your business on the principles and things of God. Um, I do believe that, you know, there's all these different types of, you know, businesses out there, but I do believe that I'm called to kingdom entrepreneurs and to be able to pour into them, whether they are dealing with um, the different avatar customer, different customer avatar, um, believers or non-believers, but for your business sake, if God has put something in you, you want to make sure that you are allowing him to build that business. Do what he says when he says it, okay? That's another thing, obedience. You have to be obedient to the voice of God. There's a season in my life where I can't do everything and be everywhere. I'm in the season where you have to be obedient and obey. I am learning when I obey God, that's when things flow and flourish. But when I disobey or when I'm not in, in a line with what he's saying, it shows. <laughs> it shows. So make sure that you are trusting and obeying God. Another thing, my second point is you have to have a different mindset set. There's a paradigm shift that has to happen in your mental OK, because entrepreneurship can be risky, especially if you're like me and you want to control things and you want to have your hands all on it. You are going to be have to be able to shift your mindset. You can't think the same. Romans 12 and 2 says, do not copy the, and the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You got to think about things differently. As an entrepreneur, I'm thinking about ways to be creative, innovative, to get new customers. I'm thinking about my products. 
I'm thinking about all those types of things um, as I am, you know, honing in on my business and what God has called me to do. I can't think about um, what happened last year right now because what happened last year is in the past. I can look at it and reevaluate some things, but I always have to shift my mindset, which goes into my next point. You got to make sure that you're developing your craft. So whatever your line is, whatever your role is, your business line is, you need to develop that gift. Get around other people who are doing the same thing. I love Ruth and Naomi because and and how um Ruth was kind of like gleaning from um, Naomi and gleaning in the field of Boaz, right? She was run, she was gleaning, gathering information, gathering um, food for her to eat. We as entrepreneurs need to be gleaning from someone else. Goes back to my point, find a coach. Who is coaching you? A coach will save your life. You need a business coach. And here's a fun fact. Business coaching is a write-off in your business. So whatever you're paying for that person, you can write that off on your taxes, okay? So get a coach, invest in your craft. That's an investment, okay? Um, First Timothy 4, 14 says, do not neglect the gift that is in you which has been given to you by the prophecy of laying of hands of the eldership, okay? So listen, do I want to focus on that word. Do not neglect the gift in you. You need to develop the gift. You need training. You need um, wisdom. You need people who have been there before. You need a coach. You need somebody who does not know, um, who knows the things that you don't know. So if you're not good in marketing, you need to find your marketing person. If you're not good with advertising or if you're not good with writing a business grants, and all, you need to find people who can help you in that sphere of influence, in that, that, um, that topic to help you grow and scale your business. Get around like-minded people. Always be innovative. Find different ways to do things. Um, developing your craft. If you are a journalist or if you have a, um, a niche for, I don't know, um, I'm going to say writing, get into some of those writing master classes. Find people who are doing what you're doing and glean, look and listen. My, my famous thing, and I'll tell everybody, when I wanted to become an entrepreneur, I said again, I wanted to be a book and a book coach, like a, a business coach. I didn't want any parts of tutoring, right? So I started to watch other people who were doing the things that I wanted to do, people who were developing courses, online courses, developing eBooks, I was on every free thing that I can get on. And there were some paid things that I did. I joined email lists. I joined everything so I can develop the skill and the gift that I needed for me to be the best coach that I am. Okay. And so you want to develop your gift. Number four, if you're thinking about entrepreneurship, whether you're in it, want to be in it, whatever, you have to be organized organization is key. First Corinthians 14 and 40 says, but be sure to do everything in decent and proper, um, done properly and in order. Or some verses say in decent and in decent and in order. Order, organization, you need it. Get your receipts organized, your clients, systems, procedures, all of those things need to lay be laid out, especially solopreneurs. I'm dropping gems already. You need systems in place. Um, you need to know how you're going to book your client. You need to know how you're going to take um, payment for certain things. You need to know the price of your services. So if that means having a price list by you all the time, so when you're talking to somebody, you can go back and don't just say something off the top of your head. You need to be sure whatever you put on that paper for your pricing to be that you are well aware. You need systems in place. Get organized, okay? So, so far I've said, trust God. Make sure your foundation is built on him. Um, change your mindset. Develop your craft. 
get organized. I have two more, okay? The next one is to be consistent. Somebody ought to put that in the chat. I am consistent. <laughs> mm. I can tell you there were times in my business that I wasn't before, before I, I wasn't consistent. I wasn't showing up and doing the things that I know that I needed to do. I wasn't being, um, being very consistent with marketing and, and putting myself out there. I wasn't, I'm just being real and transparent again, consistent. So my dear brothers, this is first Corinthians 15 and 58. My dear um, brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do, let me say that again, nothing that you do <laughs> for the Lord is useless. This business that you're building or whatever service, whatever you're doing, it is not, your work is not in vain. And I was the one who used to think that all the time, Jesus, I'm out here doing that, blah, 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 blah. Am I just doing this for nothing? God says, no, it's not in vain. Consistency pays off. Quick testimony. So I think it was maybe last year, I want to say, um, a good friend, mentor of mine, she did this 90-day um, consistency challenge. And so for my challenge was to make sure that because I wasn't um, posting on social media like I wanted to. And so my challenge was to make sure that I did a post on social media every day for 90 days. And I did it. Praise be unto God. I did it. I did it. And so, but what happened was those 90 days, I developed a habit. Y'all better hear me on today. I developed a habit of posting and sharing and marketing myself. So what happened was the more that I post, the more, the more um, interaction that I got on Facebook. And then Facebook said, oh, okay. So yeah, you have a lot of followers coming to you now. You have a lot of interactions. So now your page is due for monetization. Ding, ding, ding. I can now make money off my post. But had I not stuck out to that 90-day challenge, it start with that challenge. So I'm going to challenge you. Whatever it is that you need to do for 90 days, do it. Challenge yourself starting tomorrow. The next 90 days, I'm going to be consistent with blank. If this is consistent with writing the business plan or is it consistent with marketing? Is it consistent with, I don't know. You need to get consistent. It needs to be consistent. Your clients will show up for you if you show up for them. Be consistent. They want to see you. They want to hear from you. I, I do emails. I do text messages. I'm on Facebook. I'm talking. I have a Facebook group now where I'm posting grants. Every time I see something, every time something comes to me, I give it out. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. That's just me. But I'm being consistent with interacting with my my niche, my my um my audience, my 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 followers, my people, my tribe. I'm committed to making sure that I am always having some type of contact with them. Now I've gotten to the place now with um social media, where especially if for those of you who have business pages, if you do not know, um, you need to get the Meta Business Suite and schedule your marketing posts, but you have to have a business like page. Now, personal pages, I don't think you can schedule content unless they've done something new in the last day or so. Um, but I don't think you can schedule content on there. But if you have a business Facebook page, there's something on there where you can schedule your post. I have posts coming out. Y'all may think that I'm on Facebook. I'm not. I've scheduled that post two weeks ago. <laughs> it's just now popping out because I took the time someday during the week or God gave me something and I put it out there. And I end up 
one of my posts, I think I did it back in March, has over um, 13, 13K followers, likes, love, hearts, or whatever, it's gotten a lot of traction. Okay, it's gotten a lot of traction, but that was because whatever that what God had given me to put out, it resonated with a lot of people. And so the shares start coming. It has like 13, I think it was um, something about your feet was getting ready to walk in rooms or something like that. I can't remember, but God, he did it. And now I'm able to get stars and things because I was consistent with posting. And this is another source of income for me. I mean, y'all, like God is literally giving us tools and resources. We got to use them, okay? Be consistent. Show up for your people. When you say you're going to do something, do it. Um, when you say you're going to um, stick to whatever it is, stick to it. We got to have some, some, some be immovable. We got to be strong. We can't bend. And let me tell y'all, life is going to happen, as my coach, life be lifing. <laughs> life is always lifing, but you have to stay consistent no matter where you find yourself or what's going on. Okay. And my last point that I'm going to share with you um, is point six create and dominate. Entrepreneurs, you need to know that you were created to create and dominate. That goes back to Genesis 1, verse 26 through 28, which is the verse that I birthed my business out of. Um, I teach, I coach, I am considered a creative. I am a creative. I create and dominate based off that verse. Um, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Let me read it. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over all the creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created male and female. He created them. Then he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish and over the birds and over the air and over all of the things that living things that move on the earth. That was the new King James version. Listen, we have to understand that as entrepreneurs, we were called to be creative. We were called to create and not only just to create, to dominate. So that means whatever in whatever um, um, lane your business is in, you have to be innovative. You have to be creative. You got to think outside of the box. Stop letting people box you in. Be creative. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to give you five points to dominate where you are. Okay. First of all, do you know what lane are you in? Entrepreneurs, what is your lane? Are you a coach? Are, is your lane mentorship? Is your lane t-shirts designing? Is your lane leadership? What is your lane? What, where are you? Where, where's your lane? What is your business, um, the main purpose of it? Or is it empowering? Is it um, designing shirts? Is it, um, I don't know, books, products? What is your lane? And if you know that, then here are some things you need to do to dominate in your lane. If y'all ready, say ready, ready, ready. If y'all ready for these tips and I'm gonna be off of here. Ready, ready, ready. If you're ready for the tips, tell me in the chat. Okay, so number one, if you want to dominate, you got to know who you are and who you're called to serve. You need to know your niche. Entrepreneurs, you're not, you got to know who is your client. Who are they? Who are you called to serve? Okay. Number two, if you want to dominate, you got to show up authentically. They need the real you, not the fake you. Understand entrepreneurs, if you're grooming other people, be vulnerable. Show your transparency. Let them know that you are human. Pinch yourself. You made a mistake. You didn't get it right. Lord knows I didn't. And I tell anybody, listen, I didn't do this thing right the first time. I, I didn't, okay? I didn't know I was supposed to do it, da, 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 okay? Um, 
um, so show up authentically, be real. They need the real you. People will follow you if you be honest and transparent with them. They want to know that you're human. Don't be perfect patty. <laughs> perfect patty is not going to work. They need the real you, okay? Um, here's a big one, which I had to really, really, really um, kind of hone in in. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Oh, that's going to blow your mind. No, I don't want to make a mistake. It's okay. We fall seven times, but we get back up, right? They stand up eight. I may not be quoting that right, but yes, it's okay if we fall. It's about the journey. You're learning, especially if you've never been that way before. I tell anybody, business, I've never been this way before. I've seen other people do it. God is teaching me how to do some things. This is new for me too. I'm learning, but God has been grooming me and I don't mind sharing what God has given me with other people. Don't be afraid to fall, okay? Next, be a forever student. If you're gonna dominate in your run, in your area, be a forever student. Always be learning. Always read, find books on your um, business. Find books on entrepreneurship. Get in classes. Find how to dominate in the the um, food truck industry. I don't know whatever it is you're called to. Find ways to dominate and and get around. Um, get that. I call it professional development. Get developed in your lane and stay in your lane. If God's called you one way and he didn't call you to go, stay in your lane. The biggest thing that I can tell you is that comparing yourself and looking at somebody else's grass will get you further off of your grass and where you're supposed to be. Stay in your own lane, wherever God has called you. Stay in your lane, run your race. Don't compare your race to anybody else's race. And it took me a while to get that. And I know that we look at people and we say, oh, but they just did this and they just did that. No, what I'm telling you is run your own race. Let God um, do something within you so that, you know, he can show you how to um, perfect that thing. He can show you how he wants you to move. We can't worry about how the next person is moving. We can't worry about what's going on with the next person. We need to be able to focus on where God has us right now, right? We need to be able to focus on what's happening in the lane he has placed us. Oh my goodness. I want, If you guys are here and y'all are in Alabama, I want to invite you guys to Saturday because I'm going to dive deeper in this topic um, I'm kind of running in with some things I'm going to be talking about on Saturday at the um, Purpose Gathering with the Empowerment Prayer Ministry. If you guys, if you guys are in Birmingham, um, Alabama, listen, reach out to me and come to this free session, an hour, hour and a half session. We're going to dig deeper in the words that I've given you on tonight. Secondly, Okay, if y'all have questions, um, be a please put them in the chat and I'll um I'll get to them if you have any questions. Um, but secondly, if you are thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur and you um don't have a community of people who are like-minded, I want to invite you to the round table that's happening not this Saturday, but next Saturday on August the 19th in Bessemer, Alabama. At the round table is a revival for kingdom entrepreneurs where we get in that room. We allow God to have his way. We are open. We are what it is, hot, honest, open, and transparent. We are sharing tips, nuggets, resources for entrepreneurs, whether you are a solopreneur, this time we're focusing on outsourcing. This time we're focusing on hiring and solopreneurship. We are going to be talking and diving deep. I have an amazing team that's going to be with me on next Saturday. Get in the room. These are spaces. It's only $20 um, and 23 cents for this particular event. The event that's happening on um, this Saturday is free. 
come on y'all free just like this live free <laughs> okay sharing our hearts because we want to see you soar that's one thing i love about hr ministries we value relationships and seeing one another soar we want you to be your best self we want you to be whole we want you to be fresh we want want you to be new we whatever god has given you we want to pour into you that's what we do Okay, we're givers. We pour whatever God has given us. We want to be a resource and we pour those out so that you can be your best self. We are real people with real experiences, just sharing our stories so that we can build and help the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Listen, two events I want to tell you again. One is this Saturday. Um, I think Tisha has put the link in the, I see it in the um, chat. Um, so if you are interested in coming to the Purpose Gathering, where we're going to dive a little bit deeper in purpose, um, you can fill out that survey that she has, that um, registration form. It is free. I will be running. Listen. I will be running to the application for re to get in to allow somebody to pour into me. And not only that, the next thing, like I said, the round table is only $20 and 23 cents. That's lunch. Spend that $20 and 23 cents in your business and invest and write that $20 and 23 cents off on your taxes. Cause you can, cause it's something that does with businesses. <laughs> if you are a business owner, listen, y'all, there are so many things that I've learned on this journey as I become this, um, this entrepreneur. Um, I, I have learned so many things. That's because I am a forever student and I get in rooms where they talk about things that I haven't heard before. And I have my notepad and my pen and I am writing I'm like a, they say a baby, when that baby is learning, it's like a sponge. My brain is like a sponge. Like I'm soaking up as much information as I can because I want to scale where I am, where I want, where I see myself in five years. This is bigger. Somebody say it's bigger. And in order to scale and, and have this big vision, you need to get around big players who doing big things, get around it, let it rub off, get the knowledge, get the resources, get the tools, glean, glean. You don't know what God is going to do when you get yourself out there. Real story, and I'm going to go, last testimony. One of the coaches that I followed for years I now have the opportunity or have had the opportunity to work side by side with her. I have been following her for years. And this year I was able to connect with her to work alongside with her and I'll be attending or one of her, um, her panelists or speakers at her conference at the end of the month. And when I tell you, just go and get in the room. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy because you feel like you don't have what it takes or you don't know or you don't, um, you're not like them or listen, forget all that. <laughs> get in the room. Okay. I'm telling you, get around people who are doing things that you want to do and learn and glean and be a student and watch how God, because when God sees you putting the work in, he can trust you with more because you are allowing yourself to be open. You're increasing your mind, your capacity, your bandwidth to handle more when you do things like that. Listen, I pray. Listen, I see y'all still on here. God bless you. I pray, I pray, I pray that these tools that I've um, shared with you on tonight will be very helpful and beneficial on your journey as you are becoming, or um, if you're already in your lane, helps you just kind of like, like a reminder or a refresher. I pray that these tools um, will continue to be something that you can chew on. If you know an entrepreneur, tag them in the room. Say, hey, listen to this replay. Hey, I think you need to hear this. Hey, 
she was saying some things that I think you need to hear. If you know someone who wants to be an entrepreneur and they don't have, they, they don't know what to do or where to start or send them this, okay? This is just a few tips and nuggets to help them. This is not the whole shebang, but this may be a help for someone. These last 55 minutes that I've been on here, um, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that I see you guys, mo many of you on Saturday and on um, August the 19th at the round table. We are going to have many, 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 many other events coming up. So make sure that you are a part. Go to www.helloroof.org so you can get connected with this ministry so you can know um, all of the things that um, is taking place in this ministry. Hey, if this ministry, has been a blessing to you, I ask you to sow a seed via Cash App. Hello Ruth is our Cash App tag, dollar sign Hello Ruth. Sow a seed. If the, It could be a dollar, two dollars, even if this word has been a blessing to you. Sow a seed, put it in good ground. Listen, we just had a give back a couple of weeks ago. We were able to bless um, some scholars with some um school supplies for the new school year. This ministry, we are um, seven, uh, eight years old. We've been going for a long time. We're getting ready to turn nine. God has done so many things and he has solidified some things in me. If you just joined, I said that this ministry, HR Ministries was my luncheon pad. I would not be who I am if God didn't tell me to start a small group or lead a small group. I wouldn't be here today. I would have still been that shy girl standing behind somebody else watching, saying, hey, get somebody else to do it because this ain't my, mm -mm. but God had to deal with me in some areas and heal me so that I can fully, fully, fully walk in the plans and purposes that he has predestined for me. So listen, I pray this last class in session, as we talked about entrepreneurship one-on-one -on -one, has been a blessing. If you want more content or information on entrepreneurship, I say get connected to me personally. Um, my personal um, page is Sharissa AOT on Facebook, or you can visit my website at www.sharissat.org. Listen, I am just a vessel, just sharing all of the great and mighty things that God has done um, to me and through me. Amen. I have enjoyed you guys. Thank y'all so much for joining. Again, y'all can send the stars. Y'all can send the hearts. You can sow the seed, tag, like, share. Let people know um, that this word, is it will be a blessing for their life for their journey and for their next. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Until next time, shalom, my brothers and my sisters. Shalom, shalom, and shalom. I love you guys. Have a great rest of your evening.